All right, guys, we are here again. Welcome to another episode of Creative Always Be. This episode is called Creative Always Be Creating Amazing T-Shirts. Keegan Simon, individual, well, hashtag individual, is known for his aesthetics of how he design his merchandise, mainly T-shirt. We'll be talking to him to find out about how his, his journey as an artist uh, is, is going on and what lead led him to doing T-shirt designs. I don't have much information about Keegan. Well, he will explain to us when we when we um get into it. He will definitely give you a breakdown of how his um creativity started and everything. All right, then we're gonna check out um some of his work on Instagram. Wagwan, Wagwan, brother Key. Wagwan, Key. Good, I'm good. What's up with you? There, my brother, my day, my day, my day, my day. Individual, not building people. Yes, yes, you know yes. I mean? Um, as I say, oh, yeah, look, pan, um, just basically, I look pan some of my artwork, the man. He's a bad, 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 bad creative. Um, before the show started, me and him all a reason, and never even realized there's somebody who actually come to Edna Man in Jamaica. And uh, you know what I mean, was there with even Fanta. people like Angli and and, and, and you know what oh, I mean, yeah. Baker Steez and Angli, Yannick, and so much, Yannick so much Yannick. good. Taj, yeah, Taj, Taj Francis, you know what I mean. May I try to get Taj so, on the show too? Uh, so but Taj, Taj even people. more elusive than you, bruv. Oh, yeah, Taj, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, Taj is like, I think we pride, our, we pride ourselves on that. I, I messaged him yesterday and I was like, I, I didn't know where he, he had it. So we had this a full conversation. I was like, I still don't know where you are, bro. Like, yeah, Taj, but, yeah, Taj, Taj yeah, super, we, super, super elusive. Like, we, we pride ourselves in that. I, I would think, yeah, yeah, man. Taj, as I say, is a man where very difficult to get to. But we are trying to get to him for saving Mullin for company show. Um, and very, very difficult. kind of share the knowledge <laughs> with some of the um fellow creatives and stuff like that. So, who knows, maybe one day. Um, so. One of the things I'm always um like ask the creatives them when I'm company show is um the first thing I normally ask them is how did they get started? You know what I mean as a creative? Like what was the journey? What was the thing where you say start you on your journey as a creative? I mean, where you wanna start from? From like when I was young or like Yeah man, or you got started like when you right, decide so I... say yo a art you want to do as a as a, as a creative, so to speak. So I've always said this. Um when I was younger, I had a I have an older cousin who is like a, a brother to me. Still is a brother to me. And he I used to mimic everything he used to do. So there was one time he started drawing. And I was like three or four. I was like, I could draw too. And he's really good at art. And I just slowly be, I became good at art as well too. And I never really thought of it as something like fully creative. I was like, Oh, I like doing this. Let's see where it goes. But then, you know, you go to you go to primary school, you go to secondary school, and you kind of get pushed in your way of, you know, I should become a doctor, a lawyer, or something. Like that. You, you would 
the the system when I was growing up was never really designed or given a a reasoning to say, well, art is something viable. So I kind of like put it to the back burner. I was more focused on like um, IT. I would focus on like architecture because that's somewhat of drawing, but it wasn't anything creative. And then in 2006, I got the opportunity to go Edna Manley in Jamaica. I did the, um, the interview and everything, everything went well. And then I came up and I realized that was a good opportunity for me to really get into to art. Because at that time I was a networks operator, operator in the ministry in Trinidad. And when I got the opportunity, I got, I did it. And then the rest is history. Like I, I really think art and creativity is my calling. Uh, I mean, it, it may not, it may not call as hard as it's supposed to, but it, it really, I've done things that I never thought I would do in life. So creativity has been part of my life since three. Dope, brother. Dope, dope, dope. <laughs> man, say my drop and my tree. That's some serious things. <laughs> but I'm glad for you that, you know, because um, when you think about creatives overall, most creatives not necessarily can track back from when they, you know what I mean, that first encounter, so to speak, mm -hmm. with art or with, with whatever they're passionate about right now, but most times you know at some some level of creative they, they they have been basically always doing it they might not be able to identify that they were doing it but there was you know you were always basically doing it so to speak oh yeah absolutely because so. there was i i'm i'm not really the best in comprehension or my friends will tell you that because i say that all the time but art comes second nature like i i am when it comes to creativity I am the most confident. I have the most to say, and I and because of my training from it now, whether they know it or not, I have the backing up. I have the 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 the, the um, can't say receipts, but like the facts to back it up. I like nothing comes in my way when it comes to creativity when it comes to art, so which is very in difficult. Other, in other words, yes, Edna Mandy gave you that foundation. That oh you yeah, can absolutely. Use to say, oh, all right, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, know how to to come up with um, with a kind of conceptualize and building. Oh yeah, that, for that, that sure. Energy. Now, mind you, I must put this this caveat: they may not realize how well they've done it. They may, uh, they the school may not have fully done it. I mean, it, I would think more my interactions with the people around me, and the fact that I had to teach myself for certain things because like. It's a, it's a college. The, the university, the college will only give you so much of education. Like you have to push yourself to something that you really care about. Like they'll hand, they'll, they'll teach you, they'll teach you some fishing techniques, but they can't really fully show you how to get a, a, like a big fish. You have to practice. You have to work with friends and have groups and figure out what your style is versus, you know, what what not good for you creatively. So Edna, I think, was more of a uh, a breeding ground. I believe so. I believe so. To, um, the only when college in the Caribbean. Persons like, for instance, as I said, Todd Francis, you're talking yeah. about um, Yannick, you're talking about yeah. all of these creatives, Absolutely. based on what I, you know, when I speak to them on when, when, when we will have reason, you're always yeah. saying that, you know, it's good to go to a college and everything, but the college most time is the environment. It's not necessarily yeah. what they're teaching you. Yeah. The environment uh, is what is important. Um, and oh, you know what I mean? You collaborate with stuff. So when we hear sure. from even Yanni the last time when we did have him on the show and he mm. was saying that the environment and he learned how to manage other creatives, so to speak, work with creatives. Yeah. Because you have to collaborate a lot when you're working. Um, you do. And, it, and it's, it's not necessarily a, a physical thing like collaborate in terms of of like creating an art piece or something it's a mental thing as well too like they have things that i i have exa I have so many examples from yannick nick anglin taj um uh, natasha uh there's so many examples of 
they may not have been mentally uh in a in a particular place and we had to like help each other get there and they have to help me and stuff like that it, it's it's it was a it was a real hard four years in Edmond, but it, you the people that you meet there you'll have forever, and everybody who have is a, a given an example to of all doing great things right now. So, more power to yes. The world. Team, I mean, are we world. talking about visual? Eh? We talking about like like music, or half of the half of the, the 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 band for every major. Uh, reggae artists come from Edna. We talk about drama. Yeah. For every other week, they have some big, you know, some big play from one of the students. From yeah, it's Edna's a good school. It's a good vibes. It's a good vibes, and um, a very good. When vibe, they talk yeah. about the in a year year or the time where you were there, you're talking about yeah. Um, Yannick doing amazing things. Taj different level. Um, oh, yeah, Anglin different. different level. Um, yeah. you know I mean, you out there are doing your thing. You have um, what was that? Matthew, Matthew were there too. Yeah, oh man, Matthew, I do amazing. Things. I have so Matthew, many Ka- stories about Matthew. Here. Matthew yeah, McCarthy, Matthew McCarthy. I do amazing yes. things. I see all the all the yes. people them because I remember I usually frequent in that year. You now I don't remember mm. you, but I usually no. Well, I was there. I was a year I was a year above them at that time, or two years above them, I think. Okay, but, so I was yeah. I was very frequent there when Matthew and them people they saw them final show I was there, um, right and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, it was it was something. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is um, in terms of like when you were in Jamaica, cause you know, yeah. you, you're born a train and everything. You come to Jamaica. <laughs> um, what would you say is is the difference, so to speak, in terms of the industry, in terms of creativity and stuff like that? In Jamaica versus um, Trinidad, so to speak. Oh, well, oh, let, let's let's start first by, like I said before, at the Manly School of Visual and Performing Arts is the only uh, art school, art college in the Caribbean. So let's start there. Um, the resources in Jamaica, I've always understood, has been more creativity based because you guys are, are heavy on tourism. So there's always some passion about expressing you guys selves. So there's always, like I said, there's always a play every every week. And I remember a time where every Thursday they'll have a new rhythm, some dance or artists make a new rhythm, you know? So like there's always been that level of creativity. And Trinidad, the creativity is there, but I don't think that it, there is as much, I mean, now it's, they're getting better, but there's not as much opportunities that I would think as Jamaica has in Trinidad. Trinidad has Trinidad has opportunities, but Jamaica has that, that melting pot, has that, that uh, fight or flight system. Like we were talking earlier and we were saying how um, we are Trinidadians, are, are, well, Trinidad is, is based on petroleum. So we, we have a lot of things subsidized uh, when it comes to, to um, water, comes to electricity. We have those things subsidized. So we pay every other month this is jamaica where you know you guys pay a large amount of money every month for for water and for electricity but that's where the creativity comes again you guys have solar panels you guys have windmills i've never seen those things before until i reached jamaica like actually live in jamaica i've i've been to jamaica every year since i was nine since i was 10 because my uncle and my aunt lives there so I've been up there frequently, so I love Jamaica. But living there, you get, you kind of realize this is how Jamaica is. This is how the people are, very warm, very friendly, very collaborative, because if one person makes it, everybody else could make it in the, in the group. Um, Trinidad, I've always said, I keep seeing that thing over there. I wish Trinidad had a system like Champs. To me, Champs is the greatest uh, in, uh, institution ever because Champs is a traditional entity. It goes from grandfather to, to, to father to son to son, son to, to mothers to, to daughters, where people, no matter how big they are, if they didn't work, they will have on their school uniform, the school tie. 
and it would go to charms and it would be a nationwide thing. I think we we have pride, but not like Jamaica. Jamaica is an institutional thing. And I think that the byproducts of that would be would be the the, the, the arts, the culture, the things. Trinidad is getting there, but we have a lot to to to, to learn, I would say. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a real talk, like, I, I do believe that Jamaicans are creative even more so because of the situations. We have to find, our, we have to find ways of basically navigate all of these challenges, you know what I mean? Yeah, as a Jamaican, yeah. So, it's hard. As I say, yo, because we are paying ex- extreme light bills, I'm going to say, yo, yeah, you want me to try the solar thing, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to try the solar thing yeah. because... It's extreme yeah, light bills. Horrible. And then the company where basically I deal with it there because they're a monopoly, them almost don't mm-hmm. too yeah. care if you understand me. It's a conglomerate. So yeah. is that them or nothing? What are you gonna do? Candlelight? Yeah, you know what I mean. So you can't do that. So yeah. It's a it's a good thing for for kinda um get an understanding from a or a different perspective because as a Jamaican who grew up in a Jamaica and live in a Jamaica for all them life. You don't necessarily yeah. get to understand the difference or even see the difference if you are not a person who travel. So because I'm a person yeah. who, you know what I mean, I've done extensive traveling across yes, the world. Have. I have seen different places and kind of know that. But you know, say it doesn't have to be like this. It can be a little bit different, you know what I mean? So yeah. that always help, um, even as a creative, so to speak, for look upon things a little bit different. And you know what I mean, analyze and say, oh, okay. I say it, I say it I, I see it, I see it as um as cross pollination. Where okay. because you, you get the understanding of different cultures, you can now bring it back uh, to your art and or to your creativity and show how the blending of two cultures can work even better or could work or show something differently to the to, to the culture that you was raised on. So I, the way how you have traveled, the way how I travel myself, I think that's cross pollination because the amount of things that we have seen in New York versus, yeah, that's actually something I was writing up on from a, a PhD. There are certain art pieces that could happen in, in first world countries or, or certain cultures that can happen in third world countries or, uh, or other cultures. And I think just showing that could, bring more understanding to, to the, the youths who are coming up, whether it be from, you know, Jamaica or Trinidad or, you know, America or wherever. I think that having those opportunities to show will create even better artists or better creatives in, in the country in a quicker time, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I get you, because um, how me look upon it is that I believe that um, even as Jamaicans, if you notice when Jamaicans go out in the world, mm. or even Caribbean natives go out in the world, we always, so to speak, outshine the, 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 the international people. And there's a reason for that because, as we say, oh, because we have to be extra creative in a mm-hmm. more local space. It's like the level of creativity where we have to really put out. We, we are got 120%. And for yeah. them, probably eighty percent would be alright. So when we go to the end of the world, you know, what I mean, as Caribbean natives, and we show them where we are, them like, oh, okay. So I say, I say, I think, um, stay away. Yeah. And again, as Caribbean natives, we don't know about Trinidad, but Jamaicans, we tend to also be versatile. So we can do yeah. many things. You know what I mean? So that is one of the things where um, sometimes it's impressive to some people. But I realize when you leave a third world country, so to speak, or a developing country, and you go to a first world country, they are more interested in, in um, specialization. Yeah. So they are more interested in a specialist versus a generalist. I want you to give me your, your take on that. Because as I say, you know, say you use a t-shirt. You explain to me that you use a t-shirt more as advertisement, but you have a lot of different things that you do um, as a creative. No. Yeah. Speak on that. Speak about you know what I mean using the T-shirt thing to kind of put your art in front of people's face, and speak about the other things that you do, and then after that we speak about being a generalist versus being a specialist. 
I get I get summed up in real like one quick thing. We don't know any better. Like this this is all we know. We we are generalists because we this is this is how we have grown. Uh, I would say I wouldn't necessarily say first world countries, but there are a lot of societies that have no that have opportunities for them to focus on one particular thing. And that's great for them, but I would say for us, for our cultures, we don't know any better. So if you can do this, you can easily do that. And if you can do both of those things, you can easily do something else. And that's what it is. So I've always been a journalist. So because of that, I can explain the rest of the stuff. So uh, did fine arts in Edna, did painting. Uh, very difficult to, to reach the point where I was reaching in painting, but thanks to people like uh, Patrona Mor Morrison, who is this tiny little amazing woman, she made me focus on not not painting with finding other ways of painting. Because when you think of painting, think of like a brush, do the brush stroke, all these kind of things. But she was saying there's other types of painting, like collage, and that's what I focus more on. Collage would be you know multiple forms of media in one in one like painting, in one like focus area. And I focus more on graffiti because apparently graffiti is painting. I didn't even know that until my third year of college where they were, it was kind of gonna kick me out of school. That I wasn't doing very well, that I didn't know how to paint. But the second that happened, I completely went into stenciling, uh, spray painting, freehand, even though horrible it is. And, um, it did well. So like, I know you could see it, but you can't, but I have more painting up, up on the wall, which you've seen. Um, that was just pure stencils and, and spray paint. It took me 20 minutes to do, which is unheard of when you're actually painting. Painting, if you could tell by my other friends, they will spend days and weeks on the right shading and the right contouring and blah, blah, blah. So I did, I did the four years, got out of school, uh, was featured in Harvard uh, business books, well, well, Harvard University's books for my work that I've done. Because at that time, my last year of school, I got a residency in Scotland and London. So that's where the cross cross pollination again came about. You, you figure out that, well, I figured out that there is a, a bigger world out there, and what you might think is not appreciative appreciated sorry in our cultures is very well appreciated in in the rest of the world or certain other parts of the world so when i when i came back to jamaica i made my final year show based on graffiti and collage work and stuff got featured in harvard uh university and when that was happening i didn't know what to do next like i was doing my my final year show and i I, was like, I have no idea how i'm going to top this and that's where the fear came in of how would art really make me do this for long? Like how would I sell art? How would I get to the levels of, you know, Damien Hirst, for example, selling one piece of little thing for like millions of dollars? How do you reach there? And in my head at that time, I thought it was very, very hard. So I came out of school and I focused more on finding different ways to get art across. And part of that was uh, my t-shirts. I started doing t-shirts in 2005, but I really started doing it well in Edna Man. Like I just do tinker with it, tinker with it. And I realized that, that the t-shirts were more of a uh, fabric art, a type of fabric art. One you can wear, one you could, uh, as we talked about, make it more palatable for John Public because there's a, a big, there's a big misconception between the general public and art, and thinking of how art is very um, elusive. Art is very standoffish. Like you have to be on a certain like wavelength to interpret what this art is on the wall, where it's that's far from the case. So, I made T-shirts to be more understanding for purses, easier to pick up, easier to wear, or, or easier to move around with. And then you realize that it does what it is. 
So I focus more on, on, on teachers because I, I, I didn't really have as much confidence as I would have with fine arts. I have it now, but it took me 10 years to, to figure out. Um, so when I was learning and redefining my art form, finding out the equation of what art should be, I did teach it and it was successful. Well, it's going successful, I would say. Uh, people like the styles that I've done. It's a, it took a lot of years of that in itself, took a lot of years in figuring out your, the quality, how do I promote it, uh, what's your demographic, uh, how much you sell work for, because remember, it's, it's your work, but you have to be still, um, what's the word? You still have to be understanding of the, the, the market and not put yourself too expensive and not put yourself too cheap. So it's long-winded, but that's what I've been doing for the past longest time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As um, it, well, as mainly. Said, as I said, I mean, I got through your, um, your page. Yeah. I just I realized, say, yo, this, the one with the face um, yeah, of the girl, that is you? Yeah. Wow, so, wow, that's a funny wow. story. That's a, that's a funny story. Even, even when... Even for my final show, it was it was about being strategic. You have to like everything I do. There's a story behind it, right? So I'll give you the story behind it. There was a final final show. <laughs> uh, final show. Uh, I was doing work with a friend of mine, Kamara Swaby, who lives in New York now, and he did a uh, he did an art piece that was on one of the, if you walk upstairs to the visual communications area, there is a piece that he did out of wood. And we would we were docking back and forth at the same time. For that. And when he was doing it, I was like, yo, you know, I should do mine somewhere as well too. And how I thought about it was, there's only one way inside Edna Manning. You have to drive that little, little road to get wherever you need to. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. make so sure put my artwork there so everyone can see my work no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is, is Matthew work beside yours, right? Yeah, but yeah. So Matthew yeah. did Matthew did that uh, two years after I did mine. Two years after. But even with that, there was a, a lot of um there was a lot of back and forth because you're not supposed to put stuff on the on the, the, the panels. So I had to write uh, a proposal. I had to get approval from the principal at that time who, who was Mr. Duhini, who he passed away now. But I had to get that approved. It took me a long time because you have to, to, to go about it the right way. You can't just put it up and then they, they, they take it down and then, you know, a whole heap of nonsense. So I did it the right way and they liked it so much, they made it a part of the permanent collection. So I would think that a couple, like June, earlier in June, it would have made it 10 years it was there. Um, it is it is still really, there now. Yeah, I know mean, I know. You can't yeah, pass there. there. It's probably permanent like, collection. Man, they're man, they're always them. looking at it and like, oh, this is cool. Oh. I'm not sure if yeah, Matthew so. one is still there because I think Matthew did get in a trouble because Matthew did put Wally for graffiti over the school. Matthew did have like five different things when we see them paint out. Yeah. So, so I'm not sure if Matthew one is still there, but I know yours is still there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like they like um Miss Hines and everything, they made sure that they're making sure that, that it's staying there for a very long time. So I'm I'm very blessed for that. But all that was still just strategic. Like there, there was a, there was everything I do is there's a meaning and there's a reason for it. So I'm kind of glad that the yeah, action, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't yeah, know. Yeah, I got me, I got through your, your, your profile, see, because I mean, I try to find um the, the 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 thing that you were talking about with um the scholarship and going to um, you know, I mean um, Europe and stuff like that. So I was, I'm like, whoa, is there a film worth that? But I know this, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, it's a nice thing to know that um, my year work and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm appreciative. Yeah, it's a nice thing for can see um, the work and know and know the face to the work. But I'd say, yo, as a creative, you know what I mean? You go through various things, um, you know what I mean? As, as, as we were speaking about specialists and generalists, I'd say, yo, mm. it, in 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 the in the caribbean it's almost what we know but yeah. 
I'm coming to realize that being a specialist, sorry, and it's something that I spoke to um Angden about and another yeah. creative um out here who named Adrian Creary, which we him do more like headshots and stuff like that. And I mm. realized that being more a specialist, the specialists them seem to have a little bit more success or is known for a specific thing and people trust mm. them for that specific thing. Like oh and what means that you can be a generalist overall but you mm. are specialized in an area for instance you say you're a generalist but you mm. advertise t-shirt so a person might yeah. see you as a specialist in doing that in t-shirt t-shirt so to speak yeah but you know you're a creative director you do all that you do that for other people and do that for rate it yeah. but online you are known for this graffiti like yeah. style t-shirt you are not known for your creative director so to speak um thing, so you know what i mean i can explain that a little bit um so if it's one thing i've learned or i've tried to teach myself for the god knows how long is finding the equation of art i want to if i have to die i want to be known as that guy who tried to find the equation for art and you have to be well obviously i would say i'm a generalist because i see myself but you, as a generalist, you, should, you sh still should have some sort of signature. And the same thing I told Taj a couple of years ago, like you have to find that little signature. When you find that equation in the art, you can be able to then find multiple um, variables, but you can be able to get somewhat of the same result. And that's the most important thing. You could, as long as you find that equation for yourself, you could be able to put how many variables. And I think the variables now become the generalization of, of what you do. So I have I've done creative direction. And again, I, I go I go to my grave saying this. I've done creative direction for Marshall Montano for, for a year. Um, I have done work with countless people, but what got me in the door or what could get me in the door is hey, you're that guy who does t-shirts. That's fine but the t-shirts aren't going to, I, I would say this, but the t-shirts wouldn't necessarily define me. What's on the t-shirts will define me. How I market the t-shirts will define me. But the t-shirts just a, a, a part of my equation. The variables is I could be able to put that same t-shirt design on a wall and become a muralist. I guess put that same concept I put for my packaging for the t-shirts and use that for making a carnival costume. And that becomes, and I'll become a, a costume designer. So that's how I become a generalist, but it's all focused on the fact that, as you said, people see me as the other guy who does t-shirts and will trust me to do t-shirts. But when uh, the t-shirts are fully developed, how are you gonna market it? How are you going to package it? You know, that's where my equation and the variables come in as well. So it's a, it's a bit of both generalization and special specialist. Yeah. I hope I'm not rambling. <laughs> um, may I look on a picture? I'm going to see you on. Um, I can't remember his name. This is the next creative from Jamaica. I know they are Manhattan. Um, Which one? I see what Anglin in the picture. Let me, let, me, let me bring it up and show you. I see angling that the picture. Oh, right. So that's him, a good one. Him. Kemar. Kemar. Kemar, yeah. yes. Yeah. Another one bad more, creative. I need to link him up. One of our best friends. He is the I one that has to link him. Him tagging at the picture? Oh, man, you should. Yeah. Huh? I wonder if him tagging at the picture. Um, Le show? No, I look if him tagging at the picture because I need to link oh, him up. Well, yeah, I, can always, show too. I can always link you, but, but yeah, 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 Kemar. Yeah, but him, him is the next bad creative from Jamaica. Oh, um, absolutely, absolutely. I'm looking. He at pushes your, me. I was he looking has, he at your. Me I was looking at your your spray can. Yes. What is the spray can about? Right. So, long story short, I based individual, I based brand on graffiti. So that's why that's how I, I I grew up. I I love I love ephemeral stuff. I love stuff that, has, that, that, that can come down in a second because that's what my brain thinks. I can be able to 
cut up something real quick and they would come back down. You know, it just shows how how uh, life is, how here today going tomorrow. So I realized that I can't legally do graffiti for the rest of my life because you know you get in trouble. You don't know where where to put it. So when I did the t-shirts, and again part of the equation, I said to myself, which I learned in, in my masters when I did my masters, how do you create an experience? And part of me creating experience was figuring out the packaging for the t-shirts because you may not like my t-shirts, but man, you're gonna love my packaging. So I took a while, took a couple of months to figure out what's the coolest way to, to package it. Do I put it on a, in a plastic bag? Do I put it in a, a regular brown paper bag? Do I fold it up? And then I got this idea. I don't know where I got it from, but I got this idea of using a spray can. I was like, oh, let me use a spray can. And it took me about six months after me thinking about the spray can to figure out how to, how to make the process. Because to me, the process is the product. So it took me about six months figuring out if the can is too tall, if the can is too short, or what do I put on the can? Where does the sizing go if you know, well, if you don't know what's your size? Uh, what's the name of the design in it? How do I take it out? Uh, how do I differentiate it between male and female? Like, li like little things you would never even think of, I have thought of, of it all. And it took me like, a good time to finish it. But when I finished it, it was well produced because I produced everything. Yeah, I figured out what's the best way to make it. And I won an international award because of it. I, I won several awards because of it, because of how the packaging went from an Addy Award to, well, we have all Addies, but like regional Addies to international Addies, which, which is like New York and Miami and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm blessed that that happened, but you would never figure out how to do these things if you actually just throw yourself and just do it. So. The, the can, a lot of people, a lot of people don't even like my t-shirts. You just buy it for the can. <laughs> so either way, however you get my product, it's however you get my product. I'm not even angry. Dope, 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 bro. Car. I personally, like, I remember back then when I would usually see it, I actually thought you had a spray can line. <laughs> I never knew that it was actually the packaging for the t-shirt, you know? Yeah. Even yeah. while I was and going through it just now, I never knew. I was like... What is the spray can about? Him, him like, because you hear the graffiti and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, yeah. so him do spray, him, him kind of package him spray can them a kind of way. And now that they just explained to me, it's like even more crazy. Like, okay, so him use a spray can, which is graffiti. Yeah. And him yeah. use that kind of concept to put the t-shirts here, roll the t-shirt them, yeah. put it in that yep. package, lock it. And that's how somebody basically get. Yep. Mad, 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 mad. And, mad, and mad. I have little things that are too, like, um, uh, well, what makes it funny is like the instructions. I always try to make the, the, the instructions very funny. So make mm. people like keep it. And like, I, keep, I even have like ways of how to make people keep the can. Mm. So like, I have a friend of mine who uses it as like a, a tunnel for the jewel. And the next okay. friend who, who kept it for like, to keep the jewelry inside and stuff like that. So you, you always find different ways and it, and it evolves over the years because friends tell you different stories. So I'll give you another example. Yeah. I had a friend who flew to I can't, New York or whatever, and he had the can. And the TSA took it away from him because they thought it was a real spray can. Okay. So, and I, and I have countless stories. Of that. So I had to redesign this, the, um, the spray can to have people, if they're traveling, because obviously if they're in Trinidad and like they, for Carnival, they will travel back with it. So I created a like a a clear sleeve that I call an aerosol pouch. So they can still get the aesthetic of the spray can, but people could see it straight through it and realize that, oh, yo, so this is not... this one was like that. The one that I was just showing. It seemed like it had a transparency where you can see through um, The one you showed me, no. There's one earlier, long, long time ago, that I went to Jamaica with it. That, that was definitely a, a aerosol pouch. Like, it, it was... It's very... It's very cool to see the evolution of it. And then obviously I had different cans for different designs. So I have friends who collect the cans and they have completely different 
designs on them. So it actually looks like real spray cans when you line it up and stuff. So like this one, this one have a different design. Right. That was a different design. That one was for my show in Christmas time. And I was yeah. supposed to show the get ready for carnival because that's a, a blue devil or a red devil blowing blowing fire. So one of our folklore characters is a is a is a, a devil. And he blows fire in Cambodia riots. He blows fire in, in in Carnival Monday and Tuesday traditional mass. So yeah. to make my pop art version of it is yet another example of finding an equation and throwing a variable in it. And the result would be something that people could understand as well as they know that's my signature as well too. So I swear I never know that the 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 the, the canting was um yeah yeah like. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I never knew at all. You know what I mean? Like, I saw the cans and I was like, okay, it happens to do with graffiti and stuff like that. But I never knew that the can itself is the packaging where you give to people and say, yo, yeah, a t shirt. And we all know that delivering um, um, a product, the, 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 the experience, oh, yeah, you know it's what everything. I mean? it's the same it's thing everything. that Apple, Apple does with um, the unboxing and stuff like that, of course, and that experience Absolutely. where you get from the, the unboxing. Um, mm -hmm. is, is, is very important. Um, let's speak about this one because this seems like it glows in the dark. It does? <laughs> uh, so, it's funny you should say that. That one doesn't glow in the dark. But I have a limited edition for friends and family that uh, probably only made like a couple of them. But if you're friends and family, you literally get the actual glow in the dark one. Oh. Which is... Uh, well, I don't think you can see it, but... Uh, yeah, like, yeah, you can see it. You can see it. But like yeah, it literally see it, you see it. Mad, so, mad. Yeah, so it's the, the mask are a new thing, obviously, because of you know times, but that's where creativity comes into play. So yeah. Uh the masks uh, I think they're a very good product now. And yet again, how I define it, I have different series. So you you can get, get a grey one to be more subtle. Let me get properly get a grey one to have be more subtle. They have the glowy dark ones, they have red versions. Um, next week or the week after, I'm making uh, country versions. So like the, the, the fifth series or the fourth series will be country. So Jamaica will have a different color. Barbados will have a different color. Trinidad will have a different color. It's just so ways of just... One other thing I want to ask yeah. you, like when you make these uh, merchandise, how do you distribute yeah. them? How do you get them? So for instance, I made a Jamaican one. I am in Jamaican. I want one. How do I get this this merchandise? You have time because I could I could tell you. So like again, again, part of of my evolution has has me as a merchandiser. I've merchandised for uh, David Rudd in Trinidad. I've merchandised for Pocho J. I've well when he was in Trinidad, I've, I've produced some of his works and stuff. Um, I've done merchandising for Sizzler in his European tour. Uh, I did some stuff for, I've done merchandise for Absolute Vodka. I've done merchandise for uh, Andy Warhol Foundation. I, I've done I've done a lot of merchandising over the years. You can see something like bigger, bigger up on your page. Did no, it? Well, it would be Buster. Was it Buster? Buster, mean. Buster yeah. Yeah, I've done some work with Buster, but nothing anything crazy. But like real merchandising, like having official collaborations with these people. I've done so with some good reggae stars. Like I, I've reached out for like, yo, I've done work with, with these international people. But merchandising is a very serious thing. It's a very, very uh you have to I, I would say I would hope people would have to burn to learn, but I've definitely burnt a lot of time to gain experience for these things. So my easy answer for that question is gave me was, I would make a, a, a large amount of stuff and I would just send it to Jamaica and have a distributor in Jamaica to distribute it for me. Okay. So it'd be a lot cheaper for Jamaicans to purchase it rather than them having to buy it from Trinidad and then use DHL for shipping and handling. Okay, and so then you realize probably link that, like yeah. a, um, a bloodline or one of those persons and say, yo, bloodline, what them thing for me? Oh, perfect. I will, and exactly, I will give Franco, and Franco will, will, will send it out to people. That's precisely it. That's precisely Yeah, Franco so, was in the chat, and um, I think something is wrong with the Instagram now um, for mine, mm -hmm. in terms of, oh, I'm seeing it on my dashboard. 
but yeah. I think it's still live um, on the internet. So, Franco was in the chat earlier. Yeah. Um, Frank was a, Frank was a like great friend of mine. Every like year, that. every time he comes to Trinidad, he has to come by me because he's an ambassador for individuals as well. So I give him stuff and uh, he promotes it very, very naturally, you know, like yeah, as, yeah, as yeah. everybody would I have a lot of ambassadors. So they, they do it very uh, naturally. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, that's the easy way of doing it. The hard way of doing it, obviously, is shipping and handling. And, you know, you, have, you end up spending more money sometimes for shipping and handling just, just for so, the product. What about internationally? Right. So I partner with DHL. So I, man, I, sh I ship to some weird places. Not weird as in, as in weird, but weird as in unique. I, I've shipped to Fiji, I've shipped to Japan, I've shipped to Australia, I've shipped to almost every other part of the world. And thanks to like people like DHL, I do it a lot easier now. But even that was years and years of, um, of experience, of learning from different couriers and different prices and, okay. <laughs> You know, so, but yeah, so it's a, Have you ever thought about like using Teespring and those stuff, or is it that because you want to use your, right. you want to make your own product and do your right. style and then send it? Right. So that that that's for me. I am, I am a. I can't say perfectionist. I would probably say I'm a perfectionist, but I, I demand quality. I have. To, I pride myself on quality. So. I mean, sometimes it will it will it may vary because of situations, but I I have to have a certain standard. I have to keep it. So, I eventually, with the money that I've I've accumulated working with different people and selling much, I eventually bought my own printer. So, I will produce my own work. It's difficult to even you go you go to a Teespring for example. And you will see that uh, Teespring's T-shirt size for the design may be too small, or the print might be uh, not might wash out after a couple of days, or something of that nature. I can't, I can't, I hate that. I have to make sure that that the T-shirts have a certain standard, uh, whether it's the T-shirt quality itself or the actual print itself, or both of them combined. And that's the only way I could have learned that is when I had my own printer. And it gives you even an extra level when you get to experiment. So okay, okay. I, I've made Gloony Dark t-shirts. I would have never learned to do that if I didn't experiment on my own. There are so, companies that would never even try to do that. What about you know the t-shirt I mean? itself? Like, how, how do you control oh. quality on the t-shirt itself? I understand the print and stuff like that, using your own printer and everything. All right, so the t-shirt. Let's let's have a conversation about the t-shirt. It took me six years to find the t-shirts I'm using right now. Um, I I like to use a, a dual blend of cotton and polyester, 6040, because it gives you that comfort, but it gives you that durability, right? Mm. Obviously, things vary with different types of, of um, product. So my hoodies will never be the same quality as my t-shirts. And my onesies for babies wouldn't be the same thing. It'd be more 100% ring-spun cotton versus this heavy-duty cotton. But I have bought, I've bought, bought t-shirts from Malaysia, uh, India, Japan, Trinidad, Jamaica, Jamaica, good Lord. Sun Island, my God. I have, I have bought t-shirts from um, Dominican Republic. It's from, I, but it, the long part of, what, of me saying that I have got, I've bought t-shirts from around the world and you have to take the time to find that right quality. But when you find it, you hold on to it. The only other thing better for me than the supply I have right now is me making my own t-shirts, which I want to, but it's more feasible for me to buy from them than to make my own because yeah, the because they're going to be way too expensive yeah. to make your own. It's it's actually not as expensive, but for the volume that I do and would like to evolve to, it's more cost effective to buy for my supplier. Hopefully, in the next year or two, I will make my own t-shirts. 
Oh, so just to make a just buy the material then and just have a factory where mm-hmm. make t-shirts. Exactly, exactly. But the makes place sense. I buy from right now is amazing. So, no problem. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, man, as I'm saying, it's always, it's always a, 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 a joy to talk to um <laughs> creatives and kind of get, get, get a sense of their process and, and, and their... Yeah. Um, My process is long. Mind, so to speak, and how they, they view things because... I learned so much, you know. I mean, as I said, when I was trying to do the research on you to find out information, I never really mm-hmm. find much by the internet. But the conversation yeah, basically, I give me even more information um, about you, and you know, what I mean, your I, process and how you, as a creative, so to speak, navigate the space that you are in. You know, what I mean, as a merchandiser, as a creative yeah, I think director. I think that's happened up more. I think that's happened up more now. I mean, not because of this, uh, but. I realize that there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about me. And I kind of just have like a by the way. And people are like, yo, you should be saying this more. So I yeah, appreciate man, that. Uh, I appreciate that I can be able to help out. Yeah, yeah. Because my thing is that this show, as I said, is really um, creative always be is about where creative share knowledge. And I mean, and you basically uh, give us your insight as to your yeah. process can can mm-hmm. impact even another creative say yo listen sometimes you yeah, try to build even a product or a brand and you have to think about it differently you know what i mean when they spoke yeah, about you spoke about um the spray can and making mm-hmm. that the packaging i was like what i never knew it was a packaging for the t-shirt i thought it was a spray can all along all these years i've been seeing mm-hmm. it you know i thought it was a spray can maybe if you did ask franco say yo franco like what what what, what, what can about you mean i said oh you know it's the packaging but I always yeah. see it and I'm like, yo, it dope. And we see your work, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, you make t-shirt for um, I Love Soka. You make t-shirt for um, Zamaica and stuff like that. As a matter of right. fact, right. So I even, think... Even that, even that comes as social currency or or design currency. So even with the, the stuff like uh, like the I Love Soka stuff, I, had to, I wanted to pitch to them because there's nobody who's going to really go out there and think about these things. You have, I, I said to myself, it's better for me to pitch to them to create that opportunity. And that's another thing, you have to create all the opportunities. Um, like a lot of people don't know, I did the logo for Zamaica. I did like the initial branding for Zamaica. Um, people were like, how come you, you did that? I was like, well, it's it's social, it's not a social currency, it's currency. It's, it's, it's a way to, to solidify yourself as a designer or as a creative, so you could be multifaceted. It, it it was it was a it's an amazing feeling when you get to see, you know, the Michael the Michael logo in every like on a backpack, on a t-shirt, on a hoodie, on a hat. Uh, I recently did work uh, did the branding for Oro Carnival in Grenada. It is Grenada, yes. So like I. I mean, Brandon is horrible sometimes. Like, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tedious job, but it just goes to show that if you are creative, you have to be multifaceted. You have to 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 create that legacy for yourself, and not just be known as that one trick pony. You can be a a multi trick pony. Um. All right. Before we talk about the um, with, with about specialization and um. And um, basically, um, generalization. But yeah. do you consider being a generalist if you dig deeper into what you do? Because you, as a creative, um, uh, an artist, uh, a spray paint person, if you notice, yeah. all of this is basically you specializing in creating a pop art style, which is more yeah. spray paint. And then you dive deeper into this spray paint because I'm sure that a lot of your creative direction for other artists, I saw this stuff, I was looking at your um, Instagram and I saw this stuff for um, Sizzler, and uh, the shirt yeah. for Sizzler. It looks similar yeah. to what I see on majority artwork. So yeah. is it that you are generalizing or you are specializing on this pop art style and making it, right. make, putting it everywhere on all of your various artwork so if you're designing something for Marshall Montana it still would yeah. have that um individual look if you design something yeah. for Sizzler it still have that individual look yeah. if you design something for um protege or something for anybody Zamaica because I think the latest Zamaica shirts them when I look at it 
I see it have that individual look, you know what I mean? The inside of the yes. ex. So I am saying that is that generalizing or is that specializing, so to speak? That's specializing. That's definitely specializing. Um I love I love pop art. Pop art is the other half of my journey. So it's graffiti and it's pop art. I I love people like like my idols are Andy Warhol. Uh, as of late, later on in my in my art, artistic career, has been more Basquiat for how he how his level of approach. But um, Lichtenstein for me is my biggest person. Lichtenstein, he has a way of uh, con- taking actual comic book panels and blowing them up, extracting the the isms of what makes comics and making it into fine art. So part of that would be the bendy dots, which are the little dots, it's not half tuning, because there's a difference between half tuning and bendy dots. But it's the dots that create uh, shading, tones, color, when you mash it up together, it becomes a different color, that, that's bendy dots, right? Those little, those little isms, those little factors, I love to put in all my work, because to me, that is an homage to them, but also it's part of my signature. So if you can find ways to deconstruct that even more, which I mean to add now, because I didn't understand how you have to deconstruct it. But if you can deconstruct it even more, it becomes your art uh, now. It basically becomes a found object. And if you give it to juxtapose a found object, you can be able to make it your own. So with that, all that being said, if I could find ways to put that little signature in all my work, it, it shows that you know where the, 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 the origin point is from, but also you know where it could go. So I know I can be able to make different work for Marshall than I can make different work for Sizzler. And I could do it like that because I know <laughs> I know how to vi- how to create the variations from that one point. If you could find that one point, then the, the, the world is yours. Like a Taj. Taj has found his point. He knows that no matter what he does, he knows his he knows his signature. And you can close your eyes and say, okay, this is a Taj work. So it, it, there, is, there is a beauty in specializing in general work. That yeah, makes yeah, any yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, so. a, it's a beauty in it because you, you, people just know. Like, like Matthew McCarthy's work, you know. You know it's, it's the hands. It's the way how he interacts with different colors. You know. So he, he doesn't necessarily, if he, if he does something straightforward and he uses a color palette, he's like, oh, that's my truth. Yeah, man, um, a real, 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 real talk. And um, for me, um, when I look at it, um, as I said, Taj, Taj Francis, um, definitely fine theme, theme. Um, I yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Once you see a Taj work, you know. You know it. You yeah. know the palette, you know the, the, you the, know the, everything. The, you know the ear, or the ear look, you know all of that. You kind of see it, it's clear. You know what I mean? So... Um, I am 100% on it that Taj is, is, is um, one of those creative who find theme space that right now all Taj basically do is travel the world and do murals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, just, he doesn't need to do anything. Like he, he, but that is, like I said, that is his signature. Um, and like, once you found that little thing, like I said, the world is yours. One of the other signatures I have is Easter eggs. I love an Easter egg. You know what an Easter egg is? It what you is mean, like putting putting in um things in the artwork that a person yeah. would have I, to find I, it, like them have a seat. Yep. Mm-hmm. I've put know, things in my artwork that in every of my artworks that no uh, people have seen, but it always gives you a kind of a uh return element, like, oh, I have to come back to this. Like so i, I in all my artwork I have Easter eggs. Whether okay, it is so the, all your artwork basically about every, Easter every, egg. Every, and all the, every single one. Mainly every single one. Not like these simple, simple so ones. What the Easter egg is the Easter egg a thing that you um use to follow the artwork? So if you're following yeah. all the artwork, you can move from one and say, Oh, the Easter egg is in this, and then it moves from this to this, and you can yeah. see where yeah. them were. I've 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 done pieces where it there is something that, that pays homage to one piece that does some next piece. Uh, I've always, like, there's an Easter egg that even Taj does with it. So there's an Easter egg, are we talking about Taj? There's an Easter egg in, I did um, artwork 
for Portuguese criminal. I did the official artwork for that, thanks to, to Yannick and OJ himself. And um, I did an Easter egg footage in it. And even he didn't realize. I'm I wondering, still is, this, is this the artwork? I don't know. No, no, no. The actual, um, if you go much lower, oh no, if you go right, if you if you swipe right on that, that same piece, you'll see the, the original artwork. I, I don't see the, I, I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, so that was you yeah so that is a so breaking that down that is a homage to there's a future pass from x-men so it literally is a shot by shot of the cover of the x-men okay. instead of instead of protege's wolverine but um the the art style of the scarf is actually based on on taj's wood so i i put a easter egg on for, for taj because taj is known for protege's wood and vice versa. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I did it, I was like, let me just give a little, a little, a little funny little salute to my brethren because he's known for that. So um, it's a it's a longer story for the meaning of that artwork. Yeah. With the whole killings and in for black people and he trying to protect people because I've listened to that song like a thousand times. Yeah, so how yeah, I process yeah. how I process stuff for like creative for like songs and stuff that people want me to do artwork for it. I would have to listen to this song at least a hundred times in a, in a loop. Okay, so I did okay. get the lyrics down and man, it, was, it was hard. <laughs> but yeah. it's a great song, so I, it wasn't bad, but it's just like, when you yeah. listen, loop it, loop it, loop it. Yeah. It's dope, it's dope, dope, dope work, dope work, dope work, bro. I appreciate it. As I tell you, I say, yo, we could, we could um, sit down here and talk for days. Yeah. But, you know what I mean, this thing, have a certain time limit as a matter of fact instagram yeah. already gone past one hour and actually reached <laughs> the, uh, the program because the conversation is so I, good I and as help. i say is um is a thing where you want to um speak to creatives and kind of get a sense of their journey and also get to understand them you know what i mean it's a great conversation we're basically having fun and just you know what i mean just a talk mm. so to speak if you notice it, the show is not really um, a question-based show. I don't have a list of questions I'm going to ask. I am just listening to you and then I basically pick up and say, oh, wh what about this? Or, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. So, And I believe it was an amazing show and it's full of value in terms of like even merchandising and how you get to, you know, be the merchandiser who you, you are right now in terms of understanding the quality of product that you want to put out your your brand on you know what i mean and stuff like that and i really yeah. appreciate you you coming on and you know what i mean giving the, sh the show a strength uh you know what i mean when i reach out to people and everybody i gotta give you um you know what i mean the opportunity to talk to them because some people either them too busy or them just don't feel like it's important for come on to a show like this oh no trust me I, I, i'm so. very busy right now but i always want to make time to make sure that i can show that you know that creatives out there who willing to help other creatives yeah, man, and, and I really, I really appreciate that, brother. And as I say, yo, thanks again, thanks again, um, individual. Um, as I say, some people say one individual, but you don't know why. Yeah, you say that. I don't know why. Once you like, look at it, individual, yeah, so you just have a number one in front of it, you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, okay. So thanks again, you know what I mean, individual. And any, anytime, sir, anytime. I hope the next time you come to Jamaica, we actually can talk in person because I say, oh, I've yeah. never met yeah. you in person, but I've seen your work all over the place. <laughs> Um, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. So, I'm hoping to come to Jamaica. We can definitely um link up, and maybe I need to link Franco and try to get some of the merchandise myself. Yeah, um, yeah, because I have to send him some stuff to Franco literally next week. So, yeah, 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 I'll link Franco and get something myself and kind of, you know what I mean, just represent the brand the same way and go and bless up on the thing. Them, so, I brother, them, sir. respect, 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 much respect for him, you know what I mean, coming out and giving me the time and everything. So, we are no going to outro no and finalize the show. <laughs> Make the people them know uh, go on, you know what I mean? I think we have a dope outro too. Um with a with a dope um what I call it now. A dope um quote from yeah. Zigzag. I've been using um zigzag quotes for the last couple of shows. But me run it, you listen to the outro and tell me what you think about it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Alright, blessings, brother.
showcase team talent as a creative, you know what I mean? But we have the outro, and this one is don't be distracted by the criticism. Remember the only taste of success. The only taste of success some people have is when they take a bite out of yours. This is a this is a serious quote by Zigzag. Don't be distracted by the criticism. Remember the only taste of success some people have is when they take a bite out of yours. So what a man really has to say as a people is that some people them not really have no success in them life. So them have to criticize your thing, you know what I mean? Them don't know what success is. So them always are criticizing and say, oh this, that, that, wait, 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 because them try them, them are try running by your success, so to speak. So not really pay not really pay them no mind. You know what I mean? The critique will always be there. So while them attack, you basically focus on what you have to do and go and do what you have to do. Isn't it? Don't be distracted by the criticism. Remember, the only taste of success some people have is when they take a bite out of yours. Zig Zagla. Big, big, big quote. And that was another episode of Creative Always Be. <laughs> <laughs>